Blair, Thomas, and Magic. Yeah. Subscribe now, watch us live lavish. Yeah. We got Brooks. Brooks. Now we live, live. and we bring it major vibes. Yeah. I'm sitting here in alliance. We taking all flying high. Follow us now for guidance. I'm sitting here in alliance. I'm sitting here in alliance. We got the best advice. Keep it real, no alliance. I'm sitting here in 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 alliance. We got. And we are recording. And of course, nobody wants to do an intro. Um, happy weekend, everybody. Uh, this is the Obsidian Alliance here, and. We are doing now our, um, we had our anime appreciation for women last time, and now for this time, we're doing our comic and fictional character female appreciation video. So, um, we have our, of course, our couple favorites, and then we'll have the honorable mention. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. We do appreciate all of the support. Once again, be on the lookout for our other videos as we do uh, want to keep our schedule of posting every weekend. Um, so we're trying to keep that consistency with you. And with that, let's start with Major Vibes, your first fictional or comic book female character. I would have to go with Black Cat from Spider-Man, man. She is an awesome character. She has that superhero serum. She used to be Felicia Harvey, I believe. What's her name? Felicia. It still is Felicia. Y'all remember her last name? <laughs> All right. I was correct. Mm -hmm. But uh, I think she's one of the best like, anti heroes for Spider Man at the time, especially when Mary Jane got. Well, I was going off the, like, the animated series when I think I think Mary Jane got lost in like a world, uh, in, a, in another dimension or something like that. So Spider-Man had to get, you know, a rebound, you know, his side chick, Black Cat. <laughs> just for just for those that might hate me, um, Black Cat and Gwen Stacy are way better love interests for Peter than Mary Jane will ever be. Um, so just gonna throw that out there. Um, they can do far more and a far better reach than Mary Jane ever could. So yeah, that's my tidbit on that one. <laughs> um, I hate Mary Jane. Um, she's, she's one of those. She's like the she's like almost like the Invisible Woman back in the day in the comics when she was useless. So yeah, we're just gonna go with that. <laughs> My dog. So I'm gonna start off with my girl, the best girl in my opinion, or at least one of the best girls. Um, I'm gonna start off with my girl Starfire. Hey. Can we just like, talk about her for a minute? Like, she, who you know who to call. <laughs> Teen I Titans. Just, I've, always, I've always loved her since Teen Titans. Like she's just, she was just like the role model I wanted to be. She was so happy all the time and she was super strong and just like super cute and adorable and i just i've always loved her so brooks so i'm going with my first one as we all should know going with a movie it's the star of uma thurman and kill bill you know how that movie goes, you know why I picked her. The Bride. The Bride, yep. So, I'm going to be very simple. Beatrix Kiddo. This is the right picture, yeah? I've it seen Kiddo, but it's been a long time. <laughs> it has been a while, Jesus. Yep. <laughs> but, it is a Quentin Tarantino classic, so can't fault for that one. Very nice. Along with Reservoir Dogs and what's the other one? Pulp Fiction. There we go. Those three classics are my favorites of his. V, Blair Thomas. You know, go ahead and start it off right with Bay. My girl, Vicky. 
Um, she is a member of the Justice League. She used to be John Stewart. And uh, just a couple quick feats here that I'm just now finding out about. Um, she tapped into the power. She could tap into animal powers with her necklace. Uh, one time she was being shot at by a, a machine gun, a rotating machine gun with multiple barrels. She tapped into the power of a praying mantis and grabbed the bullets out of the sky so they wouldn't hit her. Then another one is she ran so fast that uh, Wonder Woman was trying to lasso her and uh, actually she couldn't catch her. Uh, let's see here. Um, Vixen, you said? Yes, Vixen. Uh, Vic Vic, wait, Vixen? Yes, Vixen. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, another thing she has done, she was blown apart in, in one adaptation of the comic books, and she used her uh, abilities of tapping into, I believe it was like the, the, the regenerative properties of like cells, and she used the bits of her body to come back and form a new body. Yes. She is very, very OP. <laughs> if you know, mm. if you know the Animal Kingdom, then she is a very, very OP character. Model, businesswoman, philanthropist, and African queen. Well, we the African queen part is you know, because you know she's African queen. What? Yeah. Black girl oh, and she also, she also saved Superman's life from kryptonite poisoning. She. Use the power of a butter the way a butterfly sap sap. She sucked up all of the cure and then was able to inject it into Superman that way. Nice, nice, nice. Like I said, very OP. So for anybody that knows me, <laughs> <laughs> there are two women that I brag about a lot and know probably more than I need to know about a comic book character. The first one, of course, is Wonder Woman. The quintessential female superhero, the one that every other female superhero follows after, the one that hits just as hard as Superman, can run just as fast as the Flash casual running speed, and can do anything that the big boys can. So, and she has been queen of the Amazons. She is currently princess of the Am Amazons. She is a demigod with now the power of Zeus's lightning. Her lasso of truth can see into a person's soul. Her braces can pretty much deflect anything. It doesn't matter if it is dark sides or mega beams, bullets, green lantern, whatever the case may be. <laughs> and her sword, if she does, if she hits something the right way, is pretty much can have the power to cut atoms and make a nuclear bomb. So yeah, it's yeah, there's there's nothing that more is to be said about the quintessential female superhero that all of us follow after. And also the ambassador for women in the United Nations. What more needs to be said? <laughs> My dog. So I'm gonna say this is my other. I also have a very specific honorable mention, and it was kind of hard like picking between one or the other. But you know what? I'm just gonna go with my girl Raven from Teen Titans. Mm. I'm a Teen Titans fan. Um, <laughs> because let's talk about Raven real quick. This girl was easily the strongest Titan on the yep. Teen Titans. Like, hands yep. down. No one could do anything to touch her. Because not only does she have, like, you know, the full powers of hell at her um at her at her hands at her able to use whatever she wants her father also happens to be satan now let's not get into like her, her daddy issues with, with uh, mr satan but this woman is a terrifying force just absolutely terrifying no one no one on the teen titans could touch this woman yes and she has in the comics demonstrated that time and time and time again if she so chooses she can control all of the Teen Titans and there'll be nothing that they can do about it. In fact, in a crossover with the X-Men, fun fact, her and the Dark Phoenix are considered sisters. So that just gets you the level of power. 
<laughs> she is able to have. The dark phoenix recognizes her and say, yeah, we're on the same level. We're sisters. So, yeah. And we saw what, no matter if it was X-Men 3 The Last Stand or any comic book adaptation or even on the X-Men animated series, we know what the dark phoenix can do if she's pissed off enough. So, yeah. That's, yeah, no. In fact, like Madhu said, her father is the devil in a sense. <laughs> And he has destroyed countless universes on his own. And she is the only one, really, that can stand up to him. So once again, the level of power is ridiculous. Brooks! All right. So um, my second person is going to be no other than Storm from X-Men. That's right. You already know she was already in one of our previous videos. But she deserves to be in another one. Cause you can't go wrong. See, I was gonna put Storm as my honorable mention. And I was oh, uh, well. <laughs> hey, great minds to the light. You see. <laughs> you can't go wrong with the African goddess. The Omega, the now official Omega level mutant, can create cosmic storms that can even hurt the Silver Surfer. So and pretty much can kill Magneto whenever she feels. Like, it's it's not even a joke. <laughs> if she wants to be taken seriously, she can be taken seriously. And also, of course, when Charles Xavier was gone, is the leader of the X-Men. Yep. So, respect to the African goddess and former wife of T'Challa. So, the only person that can really rein in T'Challa. <laughs> Strong black woman. Yeah, you can just like shock him with a bolt of lightning if you're mad. <laughs> <laughs> I was going more for the relationship side of things, but that works too. <laughs> <laughs> That's major vibes. I'm going with Mystique. I'm going with X Men, man. And people sleep on Mystique, especially the, the first movie, they kind of oversimplified her. That first movie, she was just like a villain. But she's it's really a deep character. And I don't understand. Another thing about her powers I do not understand is how can she generate clothes? You're naked. You're naked. <laughs> and I can understand you generate, you know, a person's body, but how you can generate their clothes and their J's and their belt. No, I don't believe that. Where does that come from? Generate mutant powers. Yeah, that's her uh, mutant power. <laughs> bro. She was able to copy she what all three. Huh? She was able to copy Wolverine's claws too. Yeah, like in That's other very iterations, deep, like the only reason why Wolverine could recognize the difference is because he was able to smell her. Like, like if like she's almost perfect when it comes to being another person, from clothes to voice to walk. So whatever the case may be, she can be really, really convincing. And as Major Bob said, is a very deep character. Of course, her children are Nightcrawler and Rogue. So she's been friends with Wolverine since the 1800s. <laughs> so you know how old she is. Um, and she was on the Brotherhood. Yeah, of friends. They, they, they've been friends. Right. <laughs> friends. I mean, yes, of course, we know they had their encounters. But we're not going to count those. Uh, <laughs> so, speaking of which, let's see. Boom. Let's see. Mado, Brooks, Major, Blair. I got to go to the, I got to go to the video games real quick. I give it up to my girl Samus, man. Oh, we can put video game characters in here. That changes everything. Fictional. Yep, all fictional. But I know the comic books. I have to agree with you on that one, Blair, because anytime I pick up Super Smash Bros, she has to be my character of choice. Mm -hmm. And I'm just reading, I'm reading some of this, uh, right? As, as of now, Zero Suit Samus is country level, apparently. Yeah. And now when she put when she puts on her suit, <laughs> she's multi multi-planetary. Her arsenal has a bomb that can literally, all she has to do, it, it's, it's a one-off. 
She shoots it into the middle of the planet and it destroys the core. Yeah, and she no. can also she can also stabilize a planet. Like if a planet is ripping apart, she's able to bring it back together with her suit. Yeah, the she's not the first female of gaming, but she is definitely one of the most popular. Uh, Nintendo staple. Her yep. the way to unlock the suit is one of the most famous things in all of gaming. You pretty much had to beat it, of course, without dying in a certain amount of time to be able to unlock Samus without the suit. And when she came onto the scene, everybody lost their minds because it proved, which I don't understand why this wasn't a thing before, <laughs> women can be badass <laughs> and oh, by the other things that everybody else can. So, by, by, the, by the way, um, did I also mention I, I, without the suit, she's able to lift missiles with one arm, so she's strong as hell. She can lift 960 pounds without the suit. And then on top of that, um, let's see here. She knows all types of martial arts from Earth and beyond. And uh, she can also she, she also knows how to paralyze people using uh, pressure points, standard melee attacks, and let's see here. What else we got? Uh, oh, she she can detect environmental changes down to the molecular level with her suit on. She can't be Batman though. Oh, yes, she can. Yes, she can. Yes, she no, can. No, 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 no. No, we're not getting into that. <laughs> we're not getting into that. We're not. <laughs> not today. Not today. Every yeah. woman on this damn roster can beat Batman. <laughs> Not today. Not yeah. today. But I guess you could say this is the best for last. Uh, it's also the second woman that I brag about the most. <laughs> Harleen Quinzel, a.k.a. Harley uh, Quinn. The woman that went from, oh, being a abused woman by the Joker and being the Joker's henchman and sidekick in the animated series to being now, I would damn near say, on popularity with Batman, Superman, and Wonder Woman. As far as popularity goes, she's definitely the most popular on Halloween. <laughs> um, so, but she has come a long way from being the, the poster child for abuse relationship. <laughs> to now being her own woman and yeah. having a very beautiful relationship, oh, very beautiful open relationship, of course, with the Pamela Isley, AKA Poison Ivy. Um, even though it was always hinted at that they were bisexual, I am glad that they officially made it official. Um, so that way, everything can be put to rest, that they are officially in a couple, have been a couple, things of that nature. Anyways, I wanna say that uh, I think Harley uh, is a very important character, like it, in general, but also for a lot of, I feel like a lot of girls growing up, because like a lot of girls and women, because she is, like she was the poster child for like an abusive relationship. Like she was like, what not to do. Like do, like, do not get into a relationship like this with a guy like this. And it kind of got annoying after a while because she went from being the poster child to the weird period of just being super overly sexualized and not really having any merit aside from her really tiny booty shorts and bra and just kind of being there. So like actually being a very viable character that has a very interesting story and like like she's very strong and like someone you clearly don't want to mess with. I just, growing up, I saw that transition of her in like the comics and the games and the most recent movies. And I think it's just really important. She's, she is a really important character for a lot of like uh, women, a lot of female fans of comics and video games, in my opinion. So, yeah, no, she is. She's very important. Like you said, she's she's one of the few women that actually did a major transition and can show you that you actually can make, even though they had a horrible beginning, um, can have a glorious present. Um, like I said, 
She's pretty much up there. She was up, she was up there in popularity when she first came out because of her personality. But now, not only is she up there because of her personality and her looks, but because she's just an awesome character. Even though now it's starting to become almost oversaturation, but that happens with every popular character. Um, even the Trinity's not absolved from that. But can, can anyone on your list be Goku though? No. Um, Raven can. Um, but anyways. Yeah. Let's <laughs> not go there. Um, anyways. Um, because Superman, um, because Goku can be hurt by magic. But anyways, honorable mentions, major vibes. I only really have one. Um, you already said Poison Ivy. Uh... No, no, no. I haven't said Poison Ivy, Ivy as an honorable mention. I just said that was Harley Quinn's wife. So. Well, that's it then. Poison Ivy. <laughs> Poison Ivy. Pamela Isley. Pretty much has control of the green. So pretty much as long as there's green on the earth, she will always live and can kill you not only with her plants, but with a touch or with a kiss. She can kill you, she can mind control you. She can pretty much do whatever she wants because her knowledge of plants and that scientific field is almost bar none to anybody else. She controlled Superman with kryptonite infused lip gloss. That is very true. So that just gives you the level of power of what she can do. She is also able to go pretty much hand in hand with Swamp Thing, because of course, as I said, they both can control the green. So, my dog. So, I'm gonna put this babe out here. And that babe is the one and only Baina. Uh -huh. I love this one because she has honestly got it all. Like she's got the looks, she's got the power, she's got the magic, and she's got the personality. Like she's just a hundred out of ten. A thousand out of ten. I love her. I'm just gonna have a like, male moment. I'm sorry, that hair. That hair thing, <laughs> like, I'm sorry, that, that's a thing, like. <laughs> I mean, it is a thing and it is a part of her character. Like her whole character is like just sexual in nature. <laughs> and like, it, for some reason it works with Bayonetta because I guess, you know, with the Umbra witches, they use their hair to like summon things and I guess it, with the context, like hair is really important in certain cultures, so it works. Oh, yeah, but no, no. it's also funny because, like, it's also hilarious because, like, yeah, her clothes are her hair, and sometimes she's naked. But, like, while you're too busy staring at her big bitties, it's like she just summoned, like, a giant dragon demon to eat you. So, <laughs> like, <laughs> no, <I'm> not, <laughs> you don't really have much time. Seven feet tall, time, can stop time, can dodge pretty much damn near the speed of light. Yeah, got bullet, got guns, not only on her hand, with her hands, but on her heels. Yeah, no, yeah, no, she's, she's an unbelievable character. So let's see, we got Major Vibes, my dope. Brooks. So I had a, a hard choice. I was, I was originally gonna go with uh, Capilia from Colo Colombiana, but I'm switching to the Powerpuff Girls. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Girls. I love them so much. Look at how cute they are. And the Powerpuff Girls were born using the older <laughs> superpowers. <laughs> They defend the city from evil. And I don't care what anybody says, they have one of the best villains, Mojo Jojo. Okay. Mojo the thing Jojo. with Mojo Jojo, though, is like, if you have to go back and rewatch the Power Book, girl, Mojo Jojo didn't do nothing except he exist. <laughs> he just ran around and got beat up. <laughs> nah, their most diabolical villain was him. Bro, Her. him low key gave me nightmares when I was a child. <laughs> <laughs> He's the original creator of the silhouette challenge. 
Oh, nah. <laughs> nah. <laughs> nah, let's see. Hey, Grandma. The Blair Thomas. Hold on a minute. <laughs> Uh yes, my honorable mention is going to be <laughs> quiet and stop barking. <laughs> He's just going through the motions. <laughs> <laughs> Blair, you're on mute. My bad, my bad. But anyway. Uh, my honorable mention is going to be, I'd say, oh, uh, the Invincible Ironheart. Riri. Good old Riri Williams. Got a couple of feats here that she's done. Um, she, me, hold on a minute. She has... <laughs> oh, anyway. that's a lovely video. Uh, this, and I'm not. Yeah, I'm, gonna, I'm only really gonna stop that one part. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Whatever. I, I don't care. Anyway, uh, the Invisible Ironheart. She was. She's been on Shield's radar since she was five. She was. She became smarter than both of her parents at the age of six. Um, she knows how to hack into Shields mainframe. She knows how to hack into St Tony Stark's mainframe, and she built her own Mach Forty One suit that actually was functional, well, more functional than Tony Stark's first ten suits. Um, the only difference between their her suits and her suits and his is that her first suit did not have an AI, and she built it out of garbage. Nice, nice. Gotta love Riri. Um, she's actually doing a lot better now since she has a black writer under her belt than Brian Michael Bendis, who, bless his soul, has two black daughters, but he can't write black women for nothing. Um, so, <laughs> so yeah, she's doing much, much better now. And she's on the Champions, so, which has an awesome comic book, by the way. Um, but for me, last but not least, Gamora. Um, Gamora, of course, from the Marvel Universe. Guardians of the Galaxy. The most dangerous woman in the universe. Things of that nature. So. You know, yeah. Gamora really made me question my sexuality for a while there. <laughs> I was like, am I gay? Or am I just attack attracted to alien green women? Because. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> and I love oh, her okay. friendship. Yeah, no. And I love her friendship with Angela, uh, Thor's sister. So that friendship is very, very great. Um, I love her friendships not only with that. Um, and I also, also love her dynamic with Thanos. So yeah, no. She has a she's a very, very good character. But that has been our comics and fictional women appreciation. Um, thank you so much. Uh, put yours down below um, which comic book or fictional character woman that you appreciate the most. Um, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And thank you so much for joining us. And if you need guidance, come seek the Alliance. Peace.